We've also got some new images of Batman. This would be Ben Affleck as Batman for the upcoming Superman v. Batman movie. So we got this photo leaked earlier in the week. Well, first we got this uh, black and white photo, and then we had the color photo. And this clearly was not meant to be released because you then have like this bright white background with the character just standing there straight up and down. Yeah. And the thing with these pictures is that then you can see in detail what the suit and everything looks like. That's the good thing. And the bad thing is that you can see in detail what the suit and everything looks like. And it looks really, really stupid outside of the context of the movie. That's the same case with absolutely all such pictures. Sure. So we can't hold that against it. And that obviously is why the original source had to redact the photo and why you can still find it but they're doing their damnedest best to try to shut it down because we're not meant to see it because it just removes the mystery and it looks kind of lame so the first thing i noticed is that this was a much more heavily textured outfit i mean we it's not that we haven't seen batman outfits completely devoid of texture i mean you've seen lots of things like ripples and muscles and maybe it may be a very light metallic piece here or there but what i what we really noticed about this it looks like rough cloth that, that it's made up of i mean the color scheme alone is enough to be surprising just that they would introduce some form of gray as opposed to having all, virtually all the all of the suit the primary color being black and that's the end of the story that of course is the uh, biggest difference however it's what i like the most i really dig this outfit it, it's kind of the batman outfit i've always wanted to see the one that looks more like the comics in all its gray and black splendor they've done so many comics now that you've probably seen every incarnation of the suit including the ones from the movies in the in the comics themselves absolutely now the goal here was clearly to do the uh, dark knight return turns suit you can see that very clearly in the bat logo on the chest to my awareness i may be wrong on this but to my awareness the only place where that particular logo has been used is in that miniseries clearly that's where they take their inspiration from beyond that the suit isn't really all that different from most of the other comic interpretations of the suit of course they have varied but mostly it has been like a gray suit with blue or black cape and i think that the black one is gonna look loads better in live action than the blue of course yeah, adam it's... west might disagree but <laughs> you know i think i think we've seen time and time again tights rarely look good so seeing kind of this cloth look is um actually a pretty smart way to duck around uh but one other thing that i also see on here is kind of a heavy stitch it looks like it's running down along the shoulders um they, and we kind of got a look at these in the shot that Zack snyder released last year um which also i think some people interpreted as kind of muscular veins yeah, that's kind of what they looked like. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be, but you get that impression that he looks all the more powerful because of them. More raw. Like more he's almost buckling power. under his own strength. <laughs> exactly. Gives him a more intimidating look. Specifically as to how Ben Affleck is looking in this outfit. He's a guy stuffed in a rubber cowl, which is, it's not bad, but it's, you know, it's pretty standard. Yeah, it's kind of as expected. There's really not much more to say about it. Ben Affleck looks kind of like Ben Affleck in a Batman suit. <laughs> I don't know. Although he has done a pretty good job at bulking up, but with all the resources at his disposal, all the trainers to go to, all the nutritionists, I really wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah, he, he needed to match that. I, I read an interest, kind of interesting companion piece this morning, and that was that apparently Ben Affleck actually asked the studio how much they wanted for the Batman outfit. Turns out they would charge him $100,000 to keep the outfit. That's a ton of money for, a, for uh, I mean, admittedly a very cool Batman costume. If I was Ben Affleck, I would have just said, well, just take it for my paycheck and <laughs> be done with it. Yeah. But 
It's not that he couldn't afford it. It's, you know, he said his wife, Jennifer Garner, may not have been thrilled with him for spending the money in sort of a hilarious way. I guess things aren't that different for celebrities than they are for regular guys, which is that uh, maybe every wild-haired idea we come up with is not appreciated <laughs> by our significant others. Yeah, that's probably true. But then again, I'm quite sure there are many purchases that he can bring up that he didn't agree with that she did. So <laughs> I think if you really wanted to he can have that suit i think he deserves it like if you play batman the the least you can get is the suit i guarantee nobody was going to charge her a hundred thousand dollars for her electra outfit more like they'd pay her to keep it but yeah <laughs> <laughs> add it to her paycheck <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, so, the, so of course, we have to talk about the other versions of this outfit that we've seen throughout the movies. I don't necessarily need to do an exhaustive list. The, the Batman movies are more storied than probably many other sequels you've seen in movie studio history. So, you, But you've got basically the Michael Keaton version, and then you've got the Val Kilmer and George Clooney versions, which had nipples on them in, in, to some degree. And you've also got the Christian Bale version, but that's, again... It, a little different than the Michael Keaton version, but again, black rubber and maybe a little bit more mechanical look to it, but not heavy. I mean, we've definitely seen more mechanical Batman outfits by far. Absolutely. I think the most mechanical outfit was the second Keaton outfit. The first one was more muscular, the one in the original Batman movie from 1989, but right. in Batman Returns, it looked much more mechanical. It almost looked, I'm not going to say uh, like a Robocop suit that's pushing it too far, but it right. definitely looked like it had metallic parts only formed out of uh, plastic or latex. Where does it compare? I, well, to me, this is absolutely my favorite outfit so far, the Ben Affleck one. And I really like the departure that it's closer to the comics. Ironically, it's closer to Adam West than anything we've seen in the movies. But it also goes to say something for the versatility of the Batman outfit. You can have so many variations of it, and they all seem to work on film, more or less, with one exception. The second George Clooney suit from Batman and Robin, the one which is like blue with loads of gray in it. Yeah, I agree with you that this is this is probably going to be the best costume. I think we we're lucky because we've got a lot of hindsight. We we get we can definitely see what didn't work about that rub those rubber outfits in a way. You're absolutely correct. I think I think in our current context, yes, that outfit is this new outfit is going to be very very cool. The, the stitches are a little weird, but I'm willing to see how they play out on screen before I actually take points away from it. What do you think about the movie itself? See, it's kind of funny because I've actually liked both of the last Superman movies. I know that they both have their huge share of critics and I'm not I'm not saying that that as Superman fans they're wrong I mean I'm not actually what you would call a Superman fan I mean I've seen the old cartoon I've read a few of the comics which actually um, maybe it was just the particular ones I read I was not that huge on but I think it's probably just the particular ones I read I think this is gonna be pretty cool in the context of the last Superman movie and then just sort of taking that next step of, of adding the rest of the DC universe to it with with a huge totally warranted focus on Batman it has to be entertaining at worst, it can't be any less than entertaining. I think it's going to be very dark, because in Man of Steel, they essentially made Superman, who traditionally has been this Boy Scout, into a dark and brooding character. They essentially made him flying Batman. And so what are they going to do with Batman? Well, they have to go even darker. Now, we don't really know anything. But there are some rumors. So this, the rumor that I heard the other day and that you had mentioned as well was that um, I guess the basis of all this is that Joker may have in the past, prior to this movie, killed Robin. And we're talking about a flashback scene where Joker specifically beats Jason Todd to death, which has been a big part of the character's lore. It leads to a lot of other interesting plot lines. And that this may be the reason why Batman has decided to drop his no-killing rule. Maybe why Superman comes for Batman is because Batman has gone on um, kind of a killing spree, at least to a limited extent, to a sort of DC movie extent. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see Batman go all-out Punisher mode. Right. But, but he might be extreme compared to Batman's usual standards. 
And uh, kind of another element of this, and, and we recently saw, um, as we covered recently, the Joker's first full appearance, um, complete with a purple glove and lots of tattoos. But it, one thing that's also apparent is that Joker's got some kind of messed up teeth. Yeah, my theory, which I've also heard other people mention, is that after the Joker then allegedly killed Robin, Batman really lost his shit and beat the crap out of Joker, including knocking out all his teeth. And I think that is awesome, and I hope we see that on film. For more great podcasts, news, and reviews, visit our site at MidnightsEdge.net and follow us on Twitter at Midnight's Edge. Also check out our Facebook group at Facebook.com slash groups slash Midnight's Edge.